Hey everyone, Fire here. Today I'm going to be explaining why Singular Focus is absolutely obliterating your map sustain, but also a pretty five-head solution to fixing it. So over the last few days, I've become aware of the fact that many people believe Singular Focus is bugged. I've read about a dozen bug reports on the official forums now, I've read many people commenting about it on Reddit, in Twitch streams, I've even spoken to a number of other content creators who have expressed their concerns about it and how they believe that Singular Focus is bugged. And so the reason why you haven't heard from me in a few days is because I have been testing this very extensively to get to the bottom of this problem. Because obviously, we can't go a whole league thinking that a major keystone with major ramifications is just bugged and unusable. What I've discovered, however, is that it's not bugged at all. We simply don't understand map drops fully and we are making assumptions that we had no business making in the first place. Okay, I'm going to run you through the two tests that I thought were the most important. I haven't tabulated the rest of the data because I don't want this to be a 30 minute video. I'm just going to take you through the stuff that is super relevant. So I ran 100 city squares with singular focus and 100 without singular focus. I've already covered this in a previous video. I had a pretty good idea of what the map weights should be with singular focus prior to the league even launching. And I've included that data in this spreadsheet, which you'll find in the, the description below. So if, you, if you're someone who watches my videos all the time, you will have already seen this information in another video okay anyway we got 89 city squares back from singular focus and then we got 63 when not running singular focus and this actually lines up to what it should be if we map out the weights and we figure out a ratio between the weights hypothetically we should be dropping 146 or we should be dropping rather 46 more city squares when using singular focus compared to not using singular focus in the actual test this lined up we got 41 percent more city squares and of course that just comes down to variance but Pretty much this went according to theory. This is, was exactly what the weights say they should be. The big problem is when we ran without singular focus, we also dropped 171 non-city square maps. And this is a big problem because this is the part that doesn't align with any of the information that we thought we understood. So a lot of people have said this is probably map equity and after doing further investigating, um, I don't have the data here, but you're gonna have to trust me on this and you can test it yourself and you'll see for yourself. I started running more city squares and I just started observing where these maps were dropping from and I came to a startling conclusion. I discovered that roughly half of the maps that drop in the game at the moment don't actually care about the favoring system. They are just generic map drops from various league mechanics or other sources. So I'm pretty sure like Eldritch Altars are one, Sentinel Rewards are one, and you can find this out very easily for yourself. There is an Eldritch Alter mod that will drop seven maps from the boss. Now, if this obeyed the favoring system, this would give you back five to six city squares when you have singular focus active. On the other hand, it doesn't, right? You go and kill the boss and you get back exactly zero maps because they all got culled and all got turned into currency most of the time. So the way this works out is basically 120 were eligible to be affected by the map favoring system and 114 were not so this is roughly a 50 50 split and it's going to vary quite a lot depending on how you're juicing your map so if you're running a strategy very focused on map quant then the map natural map drops that are obeying the system they're going to drop in a larger quantity on the other hand, if you're running a lot of different league mechanics that don't obey the favoring system, so like if you're investing heavily into Eldritch, Altar Farming, and Sentinel, you're going to have a higher percentage of maps that don't obey that system. And so you kind of have, have you, you have varied mileage when it comes to singular focus, but there is one takeaway that I need to stress before we move on, and that is if you are trying to sustain a single map, singular focus is definitely the best option you have, even though it's killing all of your other maps. If you're only interested in running City Square or Beach, you still need to have <clears throat> singular focus turned on. After doing all of the additional testing, I discovered that a very significant portion of all the maps that are dropped are adjacent maps. This is important because unlike generic map rewards, adjacent maps kind of are deterministic in the way that they drop and they can be controlled and manipulated and used to our advantage. But when you're running singular focus and when you are only wanting to drop city square, for example, suddenly none of the maps adjacent to city square will show up. They just get converted to currency. So I started looking for pairs of maps that I felt were good for Sentinel and I've ended up at the moment at Ashenwood and Infested Valley. Now there are probably better combinations. I'm not going to claim this is the best pair. Um, you could also do Ash and Wood and Mud Geyser, the couple other good ones that I still have to try. But basically, I put all of my favors onto Ash and Wood, and then I put one favor onto Infested Valley. The idea was that 
just having one favor on invested value meant that every time it dropped, it was no longer going to get converted into currency. Another thing to consider is that being an adjacent map, it gains a times two weighting to the favoring system. And on top of all that, every time an adjacent map drops, it basically has a weighting of 30 already, whereas all the other ones have a weighting of one. So as you can see in this box here, the adjacent weighting for an infested valley to drop as an adjacent map is roughly 94%. So 94% of the time that the game says, hey, we're gonna drop an adjacent map, it's dropping infested valley thanks to the fact that the favoring system actually does affect adjacent maps, providing they're eligible. Now, on the other hand, roughly 12% of the Atlas eligible drops will also be infested valley. Okay, anyway. Let's just go to the results. So I ran at 80 Ashen Wood. I got back 61 Ashen Wood, but I got back 86 Infested Valley. This is pretty crazy because I got like, I got almost 50% more Infested Valley than Ashen Wood, even though Ashen Wood was all of my favoring system and Infested Valley was only one favor. So that's kind of crazy when you think about it, which this definitely encourages the idea of running a pair of maps rather than one map. Now you can still sustain one map if you really want, but if you're able to run two maps as part of any strategy that you're doing, you're going to have a very easy time sustaining them. You're going to easily over sustain them without having to invest in your map. And uh, this opens up some other strategies. Now, I've prepared two different ways to run this. The first is like an 11-1 split, where you put 11 favors on one map and one on another. And let's say you wanted to run Ashen Wood, you would just run Ashen Wood, and then all the infested valleys that you get, you could open these invest infested valleys, pop your sentinels, clear out that first part of an infested valley, and then leave the map. Because you don't really care about infested valley, you just want to run more Ashen Wood, and you're getting so many spare infested valley, you could just waste them as a way of quickly grinding through all of your sentinel rewards, and I think that's going to be a valid strat for a lot of people. On the other hand, if you find two maps that you actually do want to run to completion, so like, let's say you actually think Infested Valley is worth finishing, which I don't because I think it's too long of a map, and the map boss is kind of a long encounter, you know, it's certainly longer than two seconds, which is too long as far as I'm concerned, then you could do a 6-6 six, six split. Now, I've detailed the weightings here, but when you're running a 6-6 six, six split, your Ashen Wood would have 180 weighting, but your Infested Valley would have 360 weighting, so you're dropping almost exclusively Infested Valley in this case, but that's okay because you wanted to drop Infested Valley, and then you would swap and run Infested Valley and drop almost exclusively Ashen Wood instead. You could keep ping-ponging between these two, kind of like we did last patch with Toxic Sewers and Waste Pool with some strats. I really must stress that even though I spent the last few days working exclusively on this at the expense of all the other content I wanted to put out, the testing that I've done has a small sample size. You know, I, I don't think five to 600 maps is at all an appropriate sample size to say definitively, this is how it works. But all my testing has been pretty consistent and the theory I've provided in this video, I'm pretty sure is correct. Feel free to do your own testing and provide your own data and, and maybe you can find that I'm wrong. Maybe you can find evidence that it's simply that singular focus is bugging out when it interacts with map equity. I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. I just want to say, I don't think Ashen Wood and Infested Valley are the best pair of maps. They're just sort of the best pair that I figured out in the brief period of time that I've been thinking about this problem. Um, and they're working for me, so I'm going to keep farming them until I think of a better pair of maps. But feel free to experiment. I absolutely encourage you to experiment and don't copy what I did. Feel free to run your own experiments. These were just the two that I felt that were worth talking about. Um, for, for whatever it's worth, the data that I didn't show, I didn't include it. I, I chose not to include it, not because it didn't agree with the findings I want to present to you guys. It's just that I couldn't be bothered organizing it all. And, I, I, you know, some of it was taken in screenshots. Some was just taken from memory. And I felt that it wasn't up to the standard that I felt it was presentable. And I don't want to sit here and just pull numbers out of my ass for the sake of getting a video out and, and misleading everyone. So take everything I've said with a grain of salt, but I'm pretty sure if you do what I've said and you, you know, do this 11-1 split on your favoring, you'll get results very similar to what I'm getting. Keep in mind, there's a lot of variance, right? If you're doing certain, certain league mechanics over others, you're going to screw one way or the other. But yeah, this is, this is my best explanation for what's going wrong with all the people using Singular Focus. Stay tuned guys, I have a lot of content coming over the next week. It's all prepared and ready to release. I just wanted to get this out first and this took a lot longer than I initially intended. One of the things I am gonna be releasing later in the week is an update to my Twink Guide. For those of you who are new, I update a Twink Guide every league and it's what a lot of people use to reroll their characters after they're done with their league starters. In fact, a lot of other content creators use this guide. I personally can't imagine what it would be like to level up a new character in a league without using this guide. 
Now, you're probably gonna have to spend 10 to 20 minutes buying the items for it, but at that point, you can just make infinite characters for the rest of the league and be in maps within three hours from making the character because it's so goddamn easy. And we're updating it, this league, with just a few optimizations. There weren't really many things I have to change, mostly just idiot-proofing it and making sure that even if you're kind of new to the game, you can still understand it, use it, and make the most out of it. If you like this video, give me a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow.